Good morning, this is Pamela Bluewater for JS Biblical Productions, July 25th, 2020. While we have been plagued for months hearing about the number of people infected with the virus, we haven't heard about what is going to happen when the pandemic is over. We have assembled a panel of lay people who are going to voice their viewpoints about the future for the people who have not contracted the illness. They are from various walks of life. Welcome. It's good to have you here. So would you please state your name and what religious persuasion or profession you speak for and then give your opinion about the future. My name is Andrea Seedling. I'm a school teacher. I would like to start with some things from the Old Testament. Psalms chapter 37 verse 5 states, God has a reason for allowing things to happen. We may never understand his wisdom, but we simply have to trust his will. I believe we know why some people die and why some people will live. Another verse is from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. God's whose life we are in the hands of is a good God. All right, Andrea, so you say our lives are in the hands of a good God. Who's next? My name is Simon Sober. I'm a shoe salesman from the United Church of Christ. The first thing when the virus struck, the government closed all bars, taverns, and nightclubs. A census taken in 2017 revealed that there are 62,602 bars in the United States. If there are, let's say, 10 habitual bar goers to every bar, then there would be 10 times 62,602 or 620,020 people who won't be passing out and making the roads unsafe when, when getting DUIs. Well, that's a good point, Mr. Soburn. Stay sober, like your name. Um, next. Oh, wait, all casinos are now closed. This will cut down on large scale gambling. The wasting of hard earned salaries on roulette and slot machines that notoriously uh, Fixed in the favor of the house. Did you know that Las Vegas Strip took $17.8 billion last year? There's a passage in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9 through 10. People who want to get rich fall into temptation, in tra a trap, into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. 10. For all the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from their faith. That's a really good point. What's next? I'm from the Church of Devotion to God. God may be happy that large churches are closed, but Jesus wants us to pray to him directly. And our prayers be personal, private, and sincere, not recitations of rote, passages out of a prayer book Look at what Jesus said in his Sermon on the Mount. Matt, chapter 6, verse, verses 5 through 8. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou shut the door, pray. Pray to thy Father, which is in secret. And thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do. For they think that they shall be heard with their much speaking. Ah, be not ye themselves like unto them. For your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. And there's another one, parable of the friend at midnight. Jesus shows us how to pray. Ask, seek, and knock. It's that simple. Oh, okay. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. Wow, and that's from the Son of Man, as he calls himself. Uh, next. The closing of movie theaters. 
and other forms of mass entertainment will force people to rethink their extracurricular activities and pursuits and engage in humanitarian efforts and godlike activities, helping others instead of entertaining ourselves with trivia. Let's suppose God, as in Genesis 1.27, that he would create the beaver instead of man in his own image. Beavers would go watch movies at drive-in theaters. They would be taking their kids to see, see movies. And men would be left outside to roam around and forage for food. Do you need to watch shootings and car chases in the movies when there is so much in real life? That's a really good point. Um, another one? You know, after the virus is over, and you know, we're back to normal, we will change the way we think about real heroes in life. Not the movie stars with their multi-million dollar mansions and baseball and football players, but the humanitarian figures of the past. Abraham Lincoln, James Madison, and Thomas Jefferson are the guys with the signs in the front of the hospitals. The heroes, we work here. Wow, new kinds of heroes. These are heroes we can emulate. Next. I remember you did a video on this uh, subject before. It was called, There is Something to be Grateful for. It had to, it had to do with writing down the five most important things in your life. Then we have the time to find out our purpose in life. And it will be something that really matters to, to the community and the world will get paid for it. You see, it's things like, you'll love it, the world needs it. You are paid for it, you are great at it. And you have passion, mission, vocation, and profession. Okay, I agree. Um, so where are we going? What else is happening? Um, I'd, I'd like to answer that. I think the, the best news was according to the Swiss Air Quality Company in Los Angeles. Los Angeles is seeing the cleanest air of any major city in the world. Look at those photos in New York City and LA compared to China and India. I'm Mary Beth from the Church of the Open Window. And after the virus has taken its toll, uh, our priorities, are, they're going to change. I mean, the unnecessary entertainment of movie theaters and live events, large events, vacations, uh, cruising, cruise ships, uh, they're all considered unessential. And things are converting over to online shopping, for instance. Normally, you'd go to Walgreens and buy, you know, say your necessities, your toothpaste, personal items, or uh, maybe Home Depot, Lowe's to get your, you know, your light bulbs, or possibly the bookstore like Barnes and Noble or somewhere like that to buy, you know, books, magazines, things like that. Also, um, your lumber, maybe you need to build something at home, whatever, new deck, go to Home Depot, Menards, places like that. But now, like, everything is, you know, easier and safer to shop online, have things delivered to you. So, um, like, the world is changing, you know, and of course, you know, now uh, colleges are converting to more online education, you know, as well as schools, you know, are doing virtual you know, classes instead of, you know, actually going to campuses. So, you know, we have to uh, strive to embrace, you know, this new future we have. Well, I think I'll sum up what I've heard today. Uh, we will... Wait, I have something to say. That was a very good summary of the things that should change and will change after the virus is gone. But I would like to add one more, an extremely important one. I want all these petty wars to stop and the threat of weapons of mass destruction that can annihilate whole populations. This is worse than the virus. 
World wars don't happen in the animal kingdom. They don't have that capability. Only mankind does. The United Nations should and must do more. All countries should and must work together to make the world a better place to live in for all, and not just for their little kingdom. You can start now. Okay, well, thank you for that. I continue to sum this up. We will leave behind the usual idols, movie stars, very rich, uh, sports heroes, the false teachers on TV asking for money. I get from you that uh, we are going to have to open our eyes to a brand new world when this is over. This is Pamela Bluewater for JNS Biblical asking our viewers to think about positive, healthier thinking, focus our energy on productive activities, and the right path for ourselves. Good morning.